The Coyotes take on the Avalanche, 2 p.m. Eastern Buck Drop. The Avalanche is the $1.90 favorite. Totals 5.5 juice to the under. Arizona's plus 160 on the money line. If you like the Coyotes to cover, they're minus 175 catching the goal and a half. We got Darcy Kemper for the Coyotes, Philip Grubauer for Colorado. I'm 8-3 in my last 11 MLB tier package plays on patreon.com slash Brock Page. I'm also 6-3 in my last 9 board member tier package plays on that site as well. If you want access to this ultra premium sports content, link for that website is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Now, Colorado's Philip Grubauer has a 2.63 goals against average and a 916 save percentage. The Avalanche have won four out of their last five games, including two shutouts during that stretch. They've also won 12 out of their last 16, of course, dating back to before the pause. Colorado's in the top three in scoring, top 10 in offensive shots. They're also giving up just 2.6 goals per contest. Nate McKinnon led the club in goals during the regular season this year. 35 goals, 68 assists, 93 total points. Nate was also plus 13 when he was on the ice. Gabe Landeskog, uh, Landeskog excuse me, also scored 21 times, 44 points for him. Defensiveman Ryan Graves had 26 total points on the season, and he was plus 40 when he was on the ice. Colorado's taking on a Coyotes team who's lost four out of their last seven contests themselves. They're currently down one game to nothing in this very series after being shut out by the Avalanche 3 0. Arizona's lost 14 out of their last 17 away from home, and they only won five out of their last 16 conference games. The Coyotes rank in the bottom five in shots allowed per game, bottom 10 in scoring. And as a matter of fact, Arizona's averaging just 2.7 goals per contest on the year. Now, total-wise, two out of the Coyotes' last three games stayed under the total of 5.5 goals. They went 63% to the under in their games away from home this year as well. Meanwhile, on the other side, five out of Colorado's last six stayed under the total of 5.5 themselves. The Avalanche also went 61% to the under away from their home ice themselves. Give me the Avalanche minus one. <clears throat> Let's try that again. Give me the Avalanche minus one and a half and the under five and a half in that game. And before we go ahead and move on, just want to take another quick time out and welcome you to the video. Got some lines and personal means out for Friday's NHL hockey action. Happy Friday to you. The weekend is finally here. Now, before we dive into some more free content here on YouTube, I just have to quickly remind you once again that we are currently 8-3 in our last 11 MLB tier package plays on Patreon.com slash Brock Page. We're also 6-3 in our last 9 board member tier package plays on that site as well. If you want some more information on how you can join in on the action, the link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's Patreon.com slash Brock Page. And moving on, we're going to take a look at Montreal taking on the Flyers, 3 p.m. Eastern start time. The Flyers are minus 160, totals 5.5, juice to the under. The Canadians are plus $1.35 to win it. And if you like them on the puck line, they're minus $2, catching the goal and a half. We got Carey Price for the Habs, Carter Hart for the Flyers. Hart's 24 and 13 with a shootout. He's, uh, his goals against average is 242, while his save percentage is 914. The Flyers are up 1-0 in this series. A nice 2-1 victory in Game 1 held the Canadians scoreless in periods 1 and 3. The Flyers have won their last four straight and 13 out of their last 14 games. They actually held their opponents to just 1.64 goals per contest on average during that stretch of 14 games. The Flyers rank in the top three in shots allowed on average per game. They're giving up just 2.7 goals per contest on the year. Philly also ranks in the top five in scoring, and they went 23-8-1 when favored this season. And uh, one more thing to add about this Flyers team, they are 11-1 straight up in their last dozen conference games. They are taking on a Montreal team who's dropped seven out of their last 10 head-to-head -head meetings with Philadelphia. The Canadians are averaging just 2.9 goals per contest 
on the season, and they rank in the bottom half of the league in goals allowed on average per game. Now, uh, Montreal's lost five out of their last eight contests, and they've averaged just one goal per contest in those losses. Now, total-wise, six out of Montreal's last eight games stayed under the total of five and a half goals. Six out of their last nine head-to-head meetings with Philly stayed under the posted total as well. Meanwhile, on the Flyers' side of things, uh, their last seven straight games stayed under the five and a half themselves. So with all that in mind, give me the Flyers winning this one straight up and the under five and a half in that contest. Next game, Canucks, Blues, 6.30 p.m. East. Blues are 145, numbers five and a half juice to the under. Canucks are plus a buck 20. And if you like Vancouver to keep it close, they're minus 250, catching the one and a half. We got Jacob Markstrom for the Canucks, Jordan Bennington for St. Louis. The Blues have lost their last four straight. They dropped one nothing in this series with Vancouver. St. Louis was shut out 3 0 in the third period to lose the series opener 5 2. They've also given up 14 total goals in their last four games as well. St. Louis is in the bottom 10 in offensive shots per game. They're taking on a Vancouver squad who's won five out of their last six, and they scored 21 goals in those five victories. The Canucks went 22 and 15 against the spread on the road this year, and of course, when I refer to the spread, I'm referring to puck line caches. But uh, anyway, uh, the Canucks rank in the top five in scoring. Meanwhile, Jake Markstrom, he's saving 92% of the shots he faces. Now, total-wise, the Canucks' last two straight got over the total of five and a half goals. 13 out of their last 16 got over that number as well. Officially, Vancouver is 5-2 and two to the over in their last seven games versus the Central Division. Meanwhile, the Blues on the other side saw three out of their last five get over the five and a half themselves. Give me the underdog Canucks plus a buck 20 and the over five and a half in that game. All right, next contest Islanders, Caps, 8 p.m. East. The Capitals are minus a buck and a quarter. Totals five and a half juice to the under. The Islanders are plus 105 to win this one. They're also minus 275, catching the goal and a half. We've got Semyon Varlamov uh, between the pipes for New York. Braden Holpe for the Capitals. Uh, Holpe went 25-14 and 14 on the season. Caps are in the top three in scoring on average per game. Uh, Washington also went 23-11-4 on the road this season. Very good road team. And they covered 61% of their road games with regard to the puck line. Now, the... Washington defensemen have really kind of kept Holpe relatively safe this year. They rank the top 10 in shots allowed, and they are taking on an Islanders club who averages just 2.8 goals per contest. They also rank in the bottom three in offensive shots per game. The Islanders lost 21 of 35 when catching plus money as well. Not very good as the underdog this year. Now, when it comes to the total in this one, three out of New York's last four got over the total five and a half goals. Six out of their last nine also got over that number. The Caps on the other side went 63% to the over on the year. Seven out of their last dozen also got over the total of five and a half goals as well. Give me the Caps minus a buck and a quarter in the over five and a half in that contest. And with that, we're going to dive into our next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be Stars, Flames, 10.30 p.m. Eastern puck drop. The Flames are minus 120, totals five and a half juice to the under. The Stars are catching even money for an outright win. They're also minus 333 catching the one and a half. We got Ben Bishop for the Stars, Cam Talbot for the Flames. Now the Flames gave up five goals to the Stars to lose game one of this series. Calgary ranks in the bottom 10 in shots allowed, meaning a lot of opportunities for the opponents. And they've lost seven out of their last 10 head-to-head meetings with the Stars. Dallas on the other side, Holds their opponents to just 2.6 goals per contest. That ranks in the top three in the NHL in that category. They're 15-9-3 when catching plus money this year. Very good as the dog. And when it comes to the scoring in this one, three out of the Stars' last four games stayed under the total of five and a half goals. Six out of their last nine also stayed under that number. Dallas is 64% to the under on this season. Meanwhile, four out of Calgary's last six on the other side 
stayed under the total of five and a half goals themselves. Give me the underdog stars plus a dollar and the under five and a half in that game. And with that said, guys, that is going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you decide to buy a package here today, just keep in mind we'll bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy Friday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash brockpage.